welcome to Paul's Way. Tonight we're going to be fixing po' boys, oyster po' boys, and man, they're going to be good. We're going to start by making the sauce, and the ingredients we're going to be using, we're going to be using pickle juice, mustard, mayonnaise, horseradish, hot sauce, capers, some paprika, and some cayenne, along with about a teaspoon of crushed garlic. Alright, we're going to start with the liquid, and what we want to do is we want to get about uh, one or two tablespoons, I'm going to use, or teaspoons rather, we get two teaspoons of the pickle juice, and I'm going to start with a tablespoon of the mustard. Now this recipe, I'm only making it enough for two two sandwiches. I'm not making a lot. You can always increase the recipe as you need it. Next I'm going to get mayonnaise. I'm going to use, for this recipe I'm going to use about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. And then I want to use a teaspoon of the horseradish. Good heaping teaspoon. I like horseradish. And I want to use a little bit of hot sauce. I'm going to put, oh, I don't know, I guess about a quarter of a teaspoon, a few dashes of the hot sauce in there. All right. And then capers. We're going to put some capers in there, but I'll do that after I mix my wet ingredients. And to mix it, I'm just going to use a fork. Fork works real well. You could use a other implement if you wanted to to make mix it, but you can see it mixes it very well. All right, now we're going to put some capers in there. See if I can get them out without getting all the juice. I'm going to try to oops. I'm going to try to get about a teaspoon. I like the capers. There we go. Now we're getting it. Uh, a couple more. I like capers. <laughs> I love the flavor of capers. All right. And now we're going to mix our dry ingredients. I'm going to use roughly a teaspoon. Come on. There we go. That looks good. That's the paprika. And about the same with the cayenne. Having a little trouble getting it out, but that's all right. There we go. Spilling a little bit, but that's all right. I like that too. So we mix that in there. And that's our roumelay dressing to go on the sandwich after we make our oyster and koi boy. And there you see it. It looks delicious. The one thing that I did leave out a moment ago was the garlic. I'm going to make sure I get that garlic in there. Got to have garlic. Oh, yes. So, there we go. We'll mix that on in there. And now it's ready for a little taste test. Spot on. Boy, that's good. Spot on. Alright, we're going to start making the coating for the oysters. I'm starting by putting in a fish fry mix. You can use uh, flour and corn meal if you like. You can use half and half. And that makes a pretty good covering for it. We're going to add three eggs to this. I have about two cups of flour or the fry mix in there. I'm going to put three eggs to it. And then I'm going to mix it thoroughly. This batter will 
coat the oysters really nice. And I'm going to show you a little trick here in just a moment. It's not quite loose enough, so we're going to add a little bit of water to that. You want to be able to dredge your oysters into it. I'm putting about a half a cup of water in there. I like egg because egg helps uh, the batter to fluff a lot better. There we go. Now we're getting a good coating. You'll see in just a moment how well the oysters dredge in that. And speaking of dredging, what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to take the oysters, which I have already uh, drained. I have bought a pint of uh, oysters there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the bag of cornstarch. I have about a half a cup of cornstarch and about three tablespoons of salt in there. Because when you drain the liquor off of the oysters, they lose some of that salt. So to put it back, what I've done is I've added salt to the cornstarch. And that's all it is. All we're trying to do is make these oysters a little drier so that when you do put them in the batter, that they pick up all that goodness. So there we go. And I'm going to use the Ziploc bag here. To dredge these. A lot easier. I mean you could do this by hand in a pan or a bowl. But I found that uh, a Ziploc bag usually works pretty darn good. I just shake it up real good. That gets a lot of that wetness that's still on the oysters off so that they pick up the batter better. And that's pretty good. Alright. In the meantime, I'm going to check my oil. I preheated the stove with my oil in a pan for toasting the bread. So I'm going to check my oil to make sure it's hot enough by taking a little bit of the batter. I'm going to drop it in the oil and see if it starts to bubble. Alright. Let's take a little bit drop it right in the pan. Ah, it's doing great. The batter doesn't even touch the bottom of the pan. That's what it's supposed to do. Bubble up like that, huh? Alright, I checked the oil. The oil is nice and hot. I'm going to bring my batter over here to closer to the stove so that when I put my oysters in there, and I don't make a big mess. I'm going to make them, it's going to make a mess anyway, but this way it's a lot better. And the oysters are nice and you can see they're well coated. Just take it right on in there. I'm going to dredge it, let the excess fall off a little bit, and put it right on in there. It won't take but a few minutes, and these oysters will be cooked. And that's just, a mess. that's just water you're cooking them in? No, that's oil. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, we're using oil. You can see they're coming right on up. Yes, they are. Making a mess, but that's okay. It ain't fun if you don't make a mess. That's right. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving it around a little bit to make sure it cooks even. And you see it's bubbling pretty good. Give it a moment to just brown just a little bit. It's going to take but a few minutes to cook the oysters. It's going to take long at all. You just need to get that batter good and cooked. So it'll be nice and crisp when you buy it in time. Alright, we're going to go ahead and pull these out. Let them drain. I'm going to put them on a paper towel let them drain a little bit more. Alright, 
just get a few more on there. a nice big oyster there. Mm -hmm. Now we're to get them out of the bag here. <laughs> That's right, we're good. Got that nice crunchy coating on there. It smells delicious. Yeah, it tastes even better. No doubt. I've converted people with this. People say, oh, I don't, I don't like them. I don't like them. Like if you run up on a bed, you can't help but like this. Yeah, it's And what do you heat your oil to? About 375. Roughly 375. You don't want to... It's on medium high heat. So that's about a five and a half on most stoves? Right. That, it varies from stove to stove and where you live. Yeah. But, uh... Looks like about oh, it. Oh, that's a seven on yours. Okay. Well, that doesn't matter, man. I thought I was, I thought I didn't have one. There we go. Now we're getting it. You can hear it click on. Not a Alright, we're gonna now we're gonna prepare some green tomato. To go with our dish, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna just tie this time. I'm not in cornstarch, but in just flour. I'm just dredging it to coat it good to absorb a lot of that moisture that's in there before we put it in the batter. That way, the batter will stick better to the tomato. You want to make sure you get it covered really good, and uh, we're just gonna keep doing this until we get it covered good. Keep working it around, sprinkle it on. Now, what's the batter you're putting? You're gonna put on it. Same. I'm gonna use the same batter that I use the oysters. Oh. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did with the oysters. We're because the tomato has so much moisture in it. We want to make sure that we coat it good. Just right. absorb some of that moisture so that the batter will stick to it better. Now that we got that coated, we'll take it over to the stove. We'll put it in our batter and we'll fry these up nice and pretty to go with our sandwich. Oh yeah. Oh that goodness. Green fried tomatoes. Now because I'm gonna, I don't want to put too much in there, but you see it's already turning a nice brown. I let it cook like that for a moment and I'm going to flip it over. Alright, now that it's cooked on one side, we're going to flip it over. Get that other side nice and brown. It just takes a minute. It doesn't take long at all. Alright, and there they're cooked. Put them over here, let them drain. Alright, let's put some more in there. Let's move these out of maybe our oysters out of the way for a minute. So we got more room for them nice tomatoes to go on there. Good. Let it 
code it up. Anytime that you're working around hot oil like this, you hear people talk about it all the time. When you put it in there, always put it in there and let it slide away from you so that you don't get hit with that hot oil. That's another good reason to soak your stuff too in the flour to get the moisture off because if you put water in hot oil, it'll splash back on you and burn you, right? Well, it'll cause it to pop. And you see that the oil is bubbling pretty heavy. I'm going to turn the temperature down just a little bit. Oh, it there. smells so good. There we go. Let like those cook up. It doesn't take very long for it to cook. remember to turn your oil off as soon as you're finished frying turn it off you don't want it to get too hot and cause a fire in your kitchen I'm scooping out some of that batter that's splattered in there. Don't want that to burn at them. Turn your oil rancid. Yeah, a little bit longer. It's going to take it a, long, a little bit longer with this piece because I turned the heat down. But you can see it's still frying real well. Just keep turning it and checking it. Pretty good. Right, we're gonna let this piece drain. All right, I'm gonna take it back. Turn the stove off. Take it back over here. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more seasoning on it. They're nice and tender and juicy and good like they are. But we're going to bring up that taste a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of Old Bay. I have. Uh, one teaspoon of Old Bay, one teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of paprika. And I'm just going to take that and just lightly sprinkle that around on everything just to bring out those flavors. And that's it. They're done. Now we're going to start assembling the sandwich. What I'm going to do is I have a, I bought a, a roll here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to butter it real good. You want to cover it as much as you can. That, you bring out all that goodness in that bread. So when we go to toast it, it'll brown up real nice. And I'm using melted butter, by the way. And in these ingredients, you said you could uh, add onion powder if you wanted, right? Yes, that's true. You can put some onion powder in there if you like. It's a matter of taste. All right. All right. Now that I've got the bread all nice and buttered, I'm going to put it on the griddle and toast it right on up. Oh, look, hear that sizzle. <laughs> you know it's nice and warm. We're just 
going to let that brown for a minute. I'll pull it and check it, make sure that it doesn't burn. We don't want it to burn, we just want it to toast. It's almost there, believe it or not. Turn it. Get those nice griddle marks on there. Looks good. There we go. Now we're ready to assemble our sandwich. And to assemble our sandwich, I'm going to start out with some lettuce. I cleaned my lettuce, by the way. But we're going to lay some lettuce on there so it looks nice and pretty. Holds all that goodness in there. Before I do that, I missed a step. We we're supposed to put the romelade uh, sauce that I made earlier, the dressing. So that's all right. We'll back up for a moment. It's not a big deal. We'll just set the lettuce aside. Almost forgot the best part. <laughs> Spread that out on the sandwich, nice and neat. I like it on both sides. Got to have that goodness in there. There we go. That's better. Now we can assemble the sandwich by putting the lettuce on it. Starting with the lettuce. Put it in there just like that. Making a beautiful sandwich here. All right. I put my tomatoes on the bottom and line them bad boys right on up. Scrumptious. Picks are perfect. It's got to have plenty of tomato on there. Now I just use a little bit of onion. I don't like a lot. We don't want to overpower the sandwich with a lot of onion. Just want enough in there to give it a little bit of flavor. Just like that. Now we're going to take our, start putting our oysters in there. Got to put plenty of oysters in there. All right. Got to make sure I cover it all up. Get it all in there. I think that's pretty good. All right, now we'll take the sandwich and just fold it right on over, just like that. Keep all that goodness in there. We're losing a little bit of it, but that's all right. We just put it right back on in there. Gotta have that. That's right. A sandwich is only good if it's messy. Never. Having a hard time getting it all to stay in there, but it will. It'll stay in there. Just give me a moment. There we go. All right, we're going to start now by cutting this sandwich in half, and you can see what how nice that thing looks. We're going to pull it apart here. Still losing them oysters, boy. They're good, though. <laughs> and there you have it, an oyster poor boy sandwich. And with that, we're going to give it some of this nice green tomato, and there you have it. Wow, smells delicious, and I already got to taste test it. Let me tell you, if you ain't making this yourself, you're not cooking. <laughs>